artificial intelligence, or AI, is everywhere. It's in your conversations with Alexa and Siri. It's what's making sure all those shows you plan on binge-watching on Netflix keep popping up in the recommendations. But can we really call artificial intelligence intelligent? The concept of AI has been around since the 50s. Mathematician Alan Turing was the first to explore the question, can machines think, when devising the imitation game, better known as the Turing test. The term artificial intelligence itself was established at a Dartmouth conference in 1956, where computer scientists came together to discuss how a machine could demonstrate the ability to learn. Out of this, the Perceptron was born. Created by Frank Rosenblatt, this machine learning algorithm was the first concrete attempt to emulate a human brain by categorizing patterns, such as shapes or letters of the alphabet. In the end, it wasn't clear if the Perceptron had learned to recognize the right patterns needed to separate them into distinct categories. Today, AI has advanced and is able to work with larger data sets. Professionals in the health industry are hoping to use these advances to effectively look for patterns of disease. Dr. J. Ho Son is working with an AI algorithm to look at thousands of PET scans to build up a digital library of what Alzheimer's disease looks like. The particular technology we use is called uh, deep learning, also known as artificial neural network. And it's able to analyze pixel by pixel of the entire PET scan of the brain. And with the AI algorithm seeing a lot of these examples, it's able to learn over time what features in the brain scan correspond to those of Alzheimer's disease patients. Dr. Sohn uses a popular type of PET scan that looks at glucose metabolism, or the amount of sugar being used by your neurons in order for the brain to work. For our algorithm, uh, our neural network was looking at the entire brain as a whole, which initially we were a little bit perplexed about, but soon came to grasp that Alzheimer's disease is really a diffuse process throughout the entire brain, which is why it's so difficult for radiologists to make this early prediction. Through Dr. Son's research, AI-assisted algorithms could potentially catch early signs of Alzheimer's, years before symptoms begin to appear. As of now, we still need humans to interpret this type of data. So how will we know if machine learning algorithms can confidently see the right patterns? In order to help build a better artificial brain, researchers are looking at how our own brains work with pattern recognition. Inside the neocortex, or that wrinkly two and a half millimeter thick outer layer of our brain, are billions of neurons receiving sensory information from other parts of the body. Those billions of neurons are organized into structurally uniform units called cortical columns. Jeff Hawkins has been studying the brain for 33 years and thinks these structures are significant to understanding intelligence. Every one of these cortical columns on its own builds a model of the world. It's not like you have this one place where all this information comes together. You actually have thousands and thousands of models of the world, and that model is built through movement, which is called sensory motor interaction. When it gets an input, it figures out where in the world that input is. You cannot learn the structure of a house without walking through the house. You cannot learn how a computer works unless you type on the keys and move the mouse and so on. Today's AI, for the most part, doesn't do that at all. If you look at today's uh, convolutional neural networks, um, they're just, they're just like image classifiers or pattern classifiers. You cannot learn about the world without moving. Despite the growth in practical applications, Hawkins believes AI systems, even with their greater speed and capacity, are still at a roadblock. You can have a system that recognizes images, and it's very easy to fool it. Meaning you can say, what's this a picture of? And you say, oh, that's a dog. And the AI system says, yeah, that's a dog. And then you can just tweak that image very slightly so you and I could not even see the difference. And all of a sudden, the computer says, no, that's a car. And it's wrong. Companies like Google and IBM are developing tools to look closer at how those decisions are being made in an attempt to get AI to explain them. While artificial intelligence is taking on a more significant role in everyday decision making, it's still incredibly limited and will continue to need oversight. It can be argued that AI can do X percent 
of doctor's job really, really well, or potentially maybe in the coming decades, let's suppose it can do 98% of what doctors can do, but it's always a 2% of critical errors that it makes. Is this a deadly error? Is this how bad is the error that it makes? And for those errors, oftentimes, actually, they, they oftentimes turn out to be pretty critical errors in human eyes. Humans really need to intervene and make sure. Being able to see where there are any errors in pattern recognition will be important as we open them up to more data. While our brains continue to inspire machine learning, knowing where artificial intelligence has its limitations can be just as informative.